Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to go over some practice questions for altered neuronal transmission as an introduction to pathophysiology. In this quiz, we'll review some of the major nervous system complications. I'll walk you through the answers and rationales for each question. Starting off with question number one, which of the following disease processes is thought to be caused by a lack of dopamine and an increase in acetylcholine in the brain? And for each question, I'll leave a bit of a break where you can pause the video and think about the answer. So the answer here is D, Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is thought to be caused by a lack of dopamine and an increase in acetylcholine. Manifestations of Parkinson's disease have been shown to decrease when taking medications like levodopa, which is used to increase the amount of dopamine in the brain. Anticholinergics block acetylcholine, which has also been shown to decrease some of these signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Moving on to question number two. Multiple sclerosis, or MS, can be described as... This one here is D, it's an autoimmune disease of CNS, or central nervous system, demyelination. This is the correct description of MS. MS occurs when the body's immune system attacks and damages the myelin, or the insulated covers, of the nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. Question number three, the triad of cardinal motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease are... And the answer here is C, bradykinesia, tremors, and rigidity. Bradykinesia being slowed movement and rigidity relating to stiff or inflexible muscles. Other common symptoms include weakness and unsteady gait. Keep in mind that not all clients with Parkinson's disease will present with these signs at all times. Question number four, spastic, dyskinetic, and ataxic are all subtypes of... So the answer here is A. These are all types of cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a group of neuromuscular disorders that affect movement and posture and is highly variable in severity. Question number five. Blank is characterized by a lesion in the spinal cord, which causes loss of motor function on the same side of the lesion and contralateral loss of sensations such as temperature and pain. And the answer here is D, Brown-Sicard syndrome. Contralateral relates to the opposite side of, in this case, the body. Brown-Sicard syndrome is the correct type of spinal cord injury that presents with these signs and symptoms. Question number six, hydrocephalus can be explained to the client as... The correct answer here is A, an accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid within the brain. Derived from the Greek words for hydro, meaning water, and cephalus, meaning head, hydrocephalus is the accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain, which increases intracranial pressure. This can occur in anyone from babies to older adults. However, signs and symptoms vary. Question number seven, which of the following is an example of a severe and somewhat common complication of myasthenia gravis? The answer is B, clients may lose the ability to effectively breathe on their own. Myasthenia gravis, or MG, is an autoimmune disorder that weakens skeletal muscle. Dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, aspiration, which is choking, and in later stages, difficulty breathing, are examples of the complications of MG. Approximately 15-20% to 20 of MG patients experience at least one myasthenic crisis, a medical emergency that requires a ventilator to help the client breathe. And for the last question of this quiz, number 8, a contusion may occur without any physical damage to the brain, and the nurse can use the term contusion interchangeably with the term concussion. The answer here is B, false. A contusion can be explained as a localized bruising of the brain, which is physical damage. The terms contusion and concussion cannot be used interchangeably by the nurse. With a concussion, there may be no physical damage visible by radiologic or physical exams. 
And that's it for the Altered Neuronal Transmission Quiz. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.